Okay, we have reached the end of the course. Thank you so much for going through all this with me. Uh, we have covered quite some ground. We have done a lot of things in this still relatively short amount of time. Right? Let me just ever so briefly recap all the things that we have been doing. The most important thing I still believe about the entire course, the foundation of Haskell is understanding data types and how to systematically define functions on data types using pattern matching. That is at the core of everything. But then, of course, the true power of Haskell comes from um, being able to use higher order functions and to compose them in various ways and to identify that certain programming problems can be solved by simply um, instantiating an already existing higher order function to suitable arguments or by combining several such functions um, together by means of composition or other operations. That really saves us a lot of work. I hope I've also been able to demonstrate that this is something that you can do on your own. You can discover patterns that repeat throughout your program and you can abstract from them. We have been doing that in the context of deriving fold R and fold L prime from the standard design pattern on lists and from the accumulating parameter pattern. We have been doing this again, essentially, for deriving monadic bind on maybes or monadic bind on the counter or state type. Right? So this is a, a, a good thing. We've also been using equational reasoning ever so often, and I cannot emphasize enough that this is actually a rather important tool, right? Even though we have perhaps only occasionally mentioned it, but whenever you're unsure about the behavior of something, that is the model in which you should be thinking about like evaluation of Haskell programs, reasoning about transformations of Haskell programs, about the equivalence of Haskell programs. And then, of course, we have been seeing how um, Haskell, Haskell's approach to I.O. works. And, uh, and that basically completes the picture because it opens up a whole world of libraries. Right. Of course, lots of libraries that do interesting things also have side affecting components. So um, before you know how I.O. works, you uh, are limited to a certain relatively small subset of functionality. But once you have that available at all, you have uh, a wealth of libraries that in principle you can understand. Right? And um, even more so if you also understand um, concepts such as monads and duplicative functors that are just widely used throughout the Haskell library landscape. And so even though we have been covering a lot of ground, in some ways this is also still just the beginning because now really you have to practice. We have, you have been like doing the assignments, but most of the assignments are still small pieces of code. Now. I really encourage you to try to set yourself uh, your own problems to start writing Haskell applications, to write Haskell um, developments uh, that you are interested in and to, to test your skills and to challenge yourself and, and, and to try new things and to also just explore, to go on Hackage and to look what's out there, what kind of libraries are there and to see whether you um, can understand how they're built. And you will still discover that also on the language level, we haven't seen everything. Um, Haskell has a, a wealth of language extensions. We have been discussing for the largest part uh, what the language, what the standard Haskell language has on offer, even though we have been covering some parts in more detail than others. We have nevertheless mentioned most of it. but. There are many, many language extensions and also type system extensions that we have not been covering that are widely used. So you shouldn't be afraid by that, right? I mean, so that is just something that you can gradually learn more about. 
And um, there's certainly a lot more to say, but most of these topics are better appreciated by uh, slightly more experienced programmers. So if you have been um, writing a couple of Haskell programs yourself, um, topics such as like going deeper uh, uh, into uh, like uh, performance questions, how to write efficient Haskell code, what data structures to use where, um, uh, that becomes more rewarding and also um, going deeper into like more advanced structuring patterns like how mono transformers work or how uh, effects libraries work that take a slightly different viewpoint, how streaming libraries work, how you can combine various folds in an efficient way and so on and so forth, uh, how you can access um, record fields in a composable fashion and generalize that concept into lenses and optics. Uh, there are many other topics that um, could be covered in, in more advanced courses. And, and definitely one thing that is missing at the moment prominently from this introduction course that should really already be in an introduction course is a slightly more extensive treatment of testing. There are fantastic testing approaches in Haskell available, in particular QuickCheck, that really deserves more um, attention. Uh, and, um, and that is something that um, is not very difficult to appreciate, so something that could immediately follow. If you want to have a different viewpoint, or if you want to continue learning Haskell, there are plenty of really, really good books. And um, uh, there are more beginner's books than advanced books. Also, the advanced books are more topic specific, so it's relatively difficult to give a um, uh, sort of a full range of recommendations. But if you want to uh, basically look at the uh, introductory material uh, from a different perspective and would like to read a book about introductory Haskell. There are also plenty of good books and I just want to highlight two books that I myself particularly like. They're both a little bit more on the theoretical side, um, and, uh, but I, I think that is usually a good approach. I think it is important to cover the, the foundations to cover, to, to learn things in such a way that you understand the underlying concepts properly, because then on that solid foundation you can build and you can always practice and uh, get more experience with the practical stuff, but the, the solid foundations, they're often difficult to fill in. So there is this book here that I have by Graham Hutton, it's called Programming in Haskell. It's currently available in the second edition. This is a fantastic introductory book on Haskell. It is in the second edition not quite as concise as, as it was in the first because Graham has been adding new material to it, but um, that's all excellent extra material that really widens the, um, the amount of stuff that is covered in this book. And it still is, um, is very short. That's very nice about it. It, it really, um, Graham is extremely good at um, uh, like using few words to convey a lot of content and to say things in such a way uh, that they are um, precisely to the point and correct and still easy to understand. So that is, um, that is a strong recommendation, Graham Hutton Programming in Haskell. And another book I personally always very much liked is by Richard Bird, Thinking Functionally with Haskell. This is also um, a new edition of um, uh, uh, an older book that had a different title, but it's still um, a very, very solid um, introduction into Haskell and in the ideas behind Haskell and uh, what's important about Haskell. And um, I, um, I really like the, the way in, in which Richard is motivating various concepts and giving the bigger picture. Um, and um, both Graham and Richard are around for a long time in the Haskell community. They have been seeing 
the development of the language almost from the very beginning. They understand where Haskell is coming from, why Haskell was designed in the way that it is designed in the first place. And, um, and they, um, they can convey these ideas very well. Yes, I, I hope that you um, stay with Haskell, that you have um, uh, successful experiences, that you've enjoyed this course. I would like to hear from you. I, I appreciate feedback. If you um, if you want to say anything good or bad about um, the course or um, about what else you would like to hear about, then by all means, just contact me. Um, I would love to chat and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye for now.